In a lot of games, especially AAA titles, crafting is kind of pointless. I get why many of them have it, with more and more games trying to include realistic elements, being able to craft items with materials found around the world helps push that sense of realism. It makes places feel lived in and offers players more things to interact with. Furthermore, it allows developers to scatter item components throughout their maps, providing players with small rewards for exploring and engaging with the environment that will build to bigger rewards after collecting enough stuff, creating a nice sense of game feel where players never go long without getting a hit of that sweet sweet dopamine. Beyond that, crafting can create a connection between the player and the things they build, because it feels more personal than buying something at an in-game store. Also, Minecraft sold a lot of copies, like a stupid amount of copies. AAA studios noticed this and wanted a piece of that market, which is why it seems to be shoved into so many games. Crafting has a ton of promise, but I found that in practice it usually falls short of its full potential. At its worst, it leads to tedious gameplay that incentivizes players to collect nearly everything they see, diminishing the sense of reward that comes from finding stuff, and turning what should be a thoughtful choice into a mindless one. Games typically use crafting in two ways, to make permanent items and to make consumable ones. Crafting permanent items is tied to progression, whether it be forging a more powerful sword so the player is able to take on stronger foes, or building a teleportation device to transport to a spot on the map that would otherwise be unreachable, this kind of crafting moves things forward. It acts as a benchmark to show how far players have come and lets them feel good for earning a lasting reward. On the other side, crafting consumable items focuses on temporary changes that help players get through various counters. So like crafting a health potion from plants found in the wild, or modifying bullets so they do more damage in upcoming fights. Crafting like this gives players a chance to customize how they approach an encounter, and also replenish their stocks on the fly in case they didn't bring enough stuff with them in the first place. These systems aren't inherently bad by any means. In fact, I think they can encourage creativity with how a player engages in a game, and also can help set a strong thematic identity. However, my issue with crafting stems from how a lot of games with it are not actually built around around it, which ends up undercutting how mechanically engaging it can be. In a lot of titles that have crafting, it's optional. And I get the logic behind that choice. Having a ton of different systems that players can choose whether or not they want to engage with provides player agency and also appeals to a wider base. The issue with this is that these kinds of games are balanced in a way where if the player chooses not to engage with a mechanic, they won't face any consequences for it. Which sounds good, but it ends up making those mechanics feel less important. As it turns out, there's a noticeable difference between how something like crafting works when it's just in a game versus when it is the game. Take Fallout 4. Players have the ability to craft a variety of items that they can keep on their person, as well as being able to build an actual base. Crafting is required a few times throughout the game, but most of those instances happen early on and are more of tutorials than anything else. Materials are spread all throughout the map, giving the player plenty of stuff to pick up while scavenging the wastelands. And these items typically weigh next to nothing, making it so they can pretty much always pick stuff up without having to worry about becoming over encumbered. Early on, I had things I wanted to craft, so I would save up materials until I could do so. But as any given material can be hidden anywhere, I'd sometimes find myself waiting a really long time before being able to craft what I wanted. And by the point I ended up getting enough materials to make it, I had either gotten something better or forgotten about it entirely. As for making a base, while I had some fun designing one in the early parts of the game, it didn't have much of a practical function aside from looking cool, so it wasn't something I engaged with a ton. All of this led to me putting crafting and building on the back burner. Every so often I would check in on what I could make, and if an item or upgrade interested me, I would craft it, but it wasn't something I thought about all that often because I didn't have control over what I found, and also the core gameplay had little to do with searching every corner of a room for items. I found it more reliable to just buy items at vendors, which is a shame because there's actually a lot of depth to the things players can craft and follow for. I just couldn't be bothered with the gameplay surrounding it. Compare this to a game actually centered around crafting, like Subnautica. In Subnautica, the only way to progress through the story is by gathering supplies found across the map and crafting them into new items and upgrades that allow the player to explore deeper in the ocean so they can find even more materials that will help them escape from the planet they've been stranded on. Materials are found in specific biomes, so as the player familiarizes themselves with the areas, they gradually learn where to find things. This made it so whenever I set out from my base, I had a specific goal in mind of what I needed to collect in order to craft the next item I wanted. It influenced where I explored and also got me to spend time thinking about what would be the best upgrades to craft in order to do things more efficiently. While gathering supplies, I had to think about what I brought 
with me and what I picked up while exploring as inventory space is pretty limited. Instead of mindlessly grabbing everything, I had to make choices of what would benefit me most. If I found a rare material that I didn't need at that moment, but would probably need later, I had to make a choice on what to prioritize. And while having to leave something behind is bound to frustrate some players, it gives way more value to the items they bring back to their base. And even the base building is tied to progression, as expanding it unlocks more things to craft and creating multiple bases throughout the ocean makes it easier to travel deeper and deeper. Fallout 4 and Subnautica have a lot of similar systems in regards to crafting, but they don't feel nearly as consequential in Fallout 4 because they are baked into the core of the game. The same thing can be seen with consumable items as well. I've talked a fair bit in the past about my issues with consumables, and most of my problems boil down to how games rarely give me a reason to use them, especially ones that do more than just replenish health or fix a status ailment. As I almost never feel incentivized to use consumable items, I obviously rarely end up crafting them. There are a lot of layers to this problem, but when looking at the crafting side of things, it comes back to how many games don't make players think about what they're picking up and using. While it seems like having a wealth of materials would lead to players crafting and using items more often, in my experience that hasn't been the case. In fact, I actually think the combination of limited inventory space and scarce item drops incentivizes players to use their consumables far more. A series that handles this pretty well is The Last of Us. Focusing on part two, there are six types of materials that players can scavenge, and they can only carry three of each. On top of that, the amount of crafted items the player can carry is limited as well, so they can't just endlessly stock up. Each craftable item requires a combination of at least two of the primary materials. Some require the the same components like health kits and molotovs, and others just share one, like silencers and trap mines. What I like about this system is that players have to make a choice about what will be most beneficial to them in the immediate future. Would it be best to use the rag and alcohol to make a med kit in case they take a lot of damage, or would it be better to make a molotov to throw out the enemy to avoid taking damage in the first place? And due to the limited carrying capacity, as players find more materials and craft more items, they're incentivized to use them, because otherwise they'll end up leaving supplies behind. Of course, of course, part of why this works is because The Last of Us is a linear game, and once the player leaves an area, they won't come back, making it so if they don't grab something right away, they'll miss out on it forever. While this level of pressure is harder to cultivate in open world games where players can go back to a spot to grab something they missed, I still think this approach would help a fair bit, especially if designers added some sort of system where materials weren't always guaranteed to stick around. With crafting around both consumables and permanent items, the common thread is that in too many games, players don't have to think all that much. and when when this happens, it leads to stale mechanics and misses what makes crafting satisfying in the first place. Honestly, it makes crafting components start to feel more like an alternate currency than an actual item that could be used to build something. And in a lot of AAA titles, they could replace those materials with money and functionally very little would change. Part of that has to do with everything I've talked about so far, but it also has to do with the fact that crafting in games doesn't really feel like crafting. More often than not, it just feels like a menu interaction, and that's because it is a menu interaction. And yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It simplifies the process and doesn't waste the player's time, which is good if they're gonna be doing it a lot. But it's also boring and makes it feel more pointless. Sure, I can craft a hundred daggers in Skyrim in like two minutes, but is that fun? Does scrolling through a menu and clicking what I want to build give me any sense of satisfaction? No. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, I can build arrows on the fly with a press of a button and not even have to go into the menus. But does that make crafting feel like anything more than a mild flavor choice so that they didn't need to have an in-game reason for why arrows are scattered all across the map, even though they do that with every other type of ammo? Not even a little. The actual act of crafting, even in games that have pretty good crafting systems, rarely has much to it. So many titles aim to make crafting as unobtrusive as possible. Personally, and I know I may lose some of you here, if a game has crafting in it, I want it to be a bit obtrusive. I want it to feel like I'm actually crafting something. The time it takes to make stuff helps it feel more rewarding. While the animations in titles like The Last of Us Part 2 and Red Dead Redemption 2 certainly border on excessive, both were extremely effective in creating an almost tactile connection between me and whatever Arthur, Ellie, or Abby was working on. The time it takes to skin a bear or modify a rifle makes the output of those actions feel more important. I actually I wish these two took it a step further and tied some sort of gameplay to it, like in Dragon Quest XI or Spiritfarer. These systems certainly take more time, but they highlight the importance of every item the player crafts, and they also act as a meditative activity to engage in between adventures. Also in Dragon Quest XI's case, depending on how well the player does at the crafting minigame, the quality of the item can go up, giving a small set of stakes that reward skilled players. Ultimately, I just want to feel like I'm crafting something, and these sorts of things can go 
a long way. Admittedly though, crafting animations and minigames both run the risk of getting annoying after seeing them a thousand times, so if a game is going to include them, it should be balanced accordingly by making sure that the system is centered around crafting for quality instead of quantity. All in all, I don't think that shallow crafting systems dramatically diminish the value of a game. Most of them are fine. They provide some flavor that appeals to our base desire to create things, and they give an alternate way to mark progression. But while it doesn't always make games with it worse, it also usually doesn't make them better. Too often, developers could get rid of their crafting system entirely, and it wouldn't really change the game all that much. At this point, they're shops with a slightly different skin. By streamlining crafting in an effort to appeal to the largest base possible, a lot of titles make it so unobtrusive that it begs the question why I even have it in the first place. I think crafting deserves better. It should be in a game because it adds to it, and not just because it checks a box off a list. Anyway, uh, have you heard about Raycon? Raycon, who is this video's sponsor, makes high quality wireless earbuds that sound as great as other premium brands, but start at about half the price. I like to listen to stuff while doing pretty much everything, and they've been great for that. They're comfortable, they sound good, and they don't have any cords to worry about, so they're really easy to just grab and go. Their latest model, the Everyday E25 earbuds, are awesome. They have six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, tons of bass, and a more compact design that gives a nice noise isolating fit. Also, they come in new fun colors. And if you click the link in the description, you can get the best discount of the year on Raycons. Available for a limited time only, if you go to buyraycon.com slash resbutin, you can get 20% off your order. Raycon makes great earbuds, so if you're in the market for a really solid pair, you should check them out. Anyway, thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring this video. To everyone still watching, thank you. It means a lot to have your support, and uh, you know, I hope you have a good day and or night or whatever. Peace, and I will see you in the next one.